hello hope you are doing fine today wherever you are so in this video we are going to learn about how to make capsim decision so this video will take you through capsim round one it will also give you details on how to do capsim round two capsim round three capsim round four up to capsim round seven or round eight it depends on when your capsim ends and uh, this not only guarantee you over 900 points but for some student get as much as 950 out of 1000 points so this is something that um, we have been doing for a while and uh, we are very good at it so in case you need some consultation or some help kindly consider contacting us and we have provided uh, uh, the whatsapp link on the video description you can also contact us via the email if you do not have uh, the whatsapp we have provided the email on video description too so without uh, much let's go straight to the reports and see what customers need in each market segment so uh, the first segment is traditional market segment and customer here are very conservative they are looking for a product that has an age of 2.0 age you can control it under research and development section the second most important thing is the price price between 20 and 30 that is an ideal price so you need to check on that while making the decision under marketing section ideal position which is a factor in research and development customers need something between five in five uh, for performance and size of 15.0 in the current year which is um, uh, 2024 or round one also reliability is very important they are looking for reliability between 14,000 and 19,000 this one depends on the strategy that we are following for us we are going for the broader differentiation so we'll go for the maximum reliability which is 19,000 let's go to R&D and try to do and try to change the R&D figures and coordinate to see if we can meet the customer's need as we have seen um, this uh, ideal position i think is that best when we go to traditional market segment and then um, it has an importance level of 21 percent so make sure you try to give the best to your customer now go to size try 13.8 and then reliability let us increase the maximum which is 19,000. Mm, that's all for traditional product able so let's now go to uh, low end and see what customers want in low end price is the most important thing here also you need to be very competitive followed by age customer want a very old product so you'll not be revising your ideal position often um, then finally customers need the the product with reliability of 17 12,000 to 17,000 so you don't need to provide them with the most because reliability only carries seven percent of importance so yeah we will not touch anything because we don't want our product to be revised we want it to remain the same to attain the required age of seven years now let's go to high end in high end uh, ideal position is the most important thing so you need to revise your product uh, often that means increasing your performance and reducing the size of that product and you need to do it with a big margin you can say between 0 0.8 and 1.1 uh, depending on when the revised product will come out make sure that uh, when you revise the product it has uh, at least three months of selling that means it will not come out later than october okay and then the customers want reliability of between twenty thousand and twenty five thousand so make sure you give them the best when you consider using the broad differentiation strategy and then finally the price the price you can leave the way it is because customers here price comes last as long as you have met other customer criteria they are willing to pay for that okay now uh, let's provide them with the uh, with the performance of 8.9 and uh, sales of 11.1 also remember to change the reliability give them the maximum which is 25,000 having done that let's go to our next uh, market segment which is performance and see what customers need in that segment 
reliability is the most important thing. Customers are expecting a product with the reliability of 27,000. That means uh, that is the case if you consider using differentiation strategy and then followed by a deal position, then price, finally the edge. So don't look at the edge. Make sure you consider reliability and ideal position first. So let us give up performance of 10.5 and uh, 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 size of 14.8. And the most important thing, remember to maximize your reliability to 27,000. And then let us calculate and see. Okay, so what you are looking for when you do the revision is the revision date. Make sure it is within the same year. You can see the current year in Capsim is 2024, and uh, make sure all your product comes out within this year. But uh, also, again, make sure you give each product at least three months of selling. So make sure your product never comes out later than October. So any product, any revision that you make, and here you see November. That is a wrong thing that you are doing. So make sure you, re you revise your product again. To make sure that they come out not later than October. Okay, now let's go to size market segment and see what customers want. Ideal position is the most important thing, followed by age and then reliability. Okay, now uh, let's give it a 4.7. And here let us give it a 9.8. Let us increase reliability a little bit to 20,000. Okay, as you can see, our product uh, looks good. All of them doesn't come out uh, beyond October. And also another thing you need to check is the perceptual map. Make sure each revised product fall within the each circle that represent that market segment. For example, able this strategic product, make sure it doesn't go outside this circle, the middle one. For Adam, which is the bottom, the lowest uh, uh, circle, make sure when you revise this product, the product doesn't go outside this circle. The same supply for performance product have as well as gap. Agape, which is the size market segment product. If any of this product comes uh, out of any of this circle, it means that it will not be meeting the customer buying criteria for that market segment. And that means you lose uh, ability to charge the price that is commented in that market segment. You And in, in several cases, you will end up with a very huge inventory. And that is a very bad thing because it attracts uh, emergency loan and you don't want to have emergency loan because it's very expensive and very difficult to recover from it so take note of where your product is again uh, when it comes to R&D this is the most important thing in Capsim because if you do anything wrong in, in R&D recovering from it is very difficult in marketing you can increase your spending maybe you can change your prices and you'll be back in the game but for R&D it is very expensive and very difficult for you to control so make sure whatever you do, whatever decision you make, reflect what customer need with regard to R&D. Okay, uh, now we are done with R&D. Let's go to marketing and we'll start uh, with pricing and forecast. Again, uh, before we start uh, doing the marketing, let's go back to customer buying criteria and start to understand what customers want. For example, in traditional segment, we can see price of between 20 to 30 that is the ideal price make sure your price doesn't go beyond 30 because if you, it does uh, that, that it means that uh, you'll be struggling to convince your buyer uh, especially since you have other product that other company that, that are selling similar product in the market so make sure your price is competitive for now uh, let us uh, charge uh, 27 uh, for Eka, which also the price is the most important thing, make sure you reduce the price. Uh, for Adam, you can maintain the price the same way it is. But for after and, Ag and Agape, make sure you increase a little bit, considering the fact that um, if you charge less, making a profit is going to be a hurdle. 
Okay, and uh, another difficult thing to do in CapSim is to do the forecasting. Make sure that uh, you, are, you check our video where we discuss the method that you can use to do the forecasting for your product. And I think um, you, it will really help you. So here, based on uh, strategy, we found that uh, 14, 1,400 is an ideal forecast for traditional product. 2,300 is ideal for low end. And uh, 650 is ideal for high end. Um, 580 is ideal for performance and okay let's take it again i think I, there was a delay in loading so here we said 1400 here 2300 here 650 yeah 580 and finally here 530 now we are done with the marketing pricing and focus let's go to promotion and sales Okay, here um, you need to spend maximum in each uh, in each category because uh, if you don't spend maximum, even though some are considered poor, uh, they have poor result. But uh, make sure you spend maximum because if you do not spend maximum, the likelihood of you attaining a high awareness is very difficult. Uh, as you can see. Uh, for print media is good in traditional low end, but uh, poor in high end performance, welfare in size. But uh, we are spending maximum regardless of anything because for now we are just starting out and uh, we don't know what will work best for us. So make sure you spend at least some money or a maximum amount of money in those in all these uh, categories because um, it will really help you. To maximize uh, the awareness that you'll be getting. The same apply to direct mail. You can see it's good in traditional and low end, fair in high end, but poor in performance and size market segment. But uh, we are considering just spending the maximum despite that challenge. But uh, as we move on, we might consider changing uh, how we are spending this money because now we will know what works for us. Okay, 700. 700. So uh, for me, uh, web media, let's see where it is important. Poor in traditional, poor in low end, but fair in high end and uh, good in performance on size market segment. So let's try just 500. So uh, Capsim is a game that uh, you give and take and not take only. So severally, you'll have to make some sacrifices so that in the future, uh, you can get a better result. So uh, don't always uh, look uh, forward to just uh, be profiting, rather it is good to make sure that uh, you try to make some losses here so that uh, when it comes um, uh, in other rounds, you can carry forward those losses and try to make uh, some profit out of it. Yeah, let's try 600, 600. Six hundred. Yeah, let's try three hundred. Okay, uh, now let's start uh, doing the sales budgeting. And uh, also same like um, in the promo budget, yeah, I also try to spend the maximum by selecting the sales force that is the maximum recommended in each category. Same you can see, uh, like outside sale has a low impact on tradition, inside sale has medium and distribution as high. But, uh, since we are just starting up, let's try to spend the maximum or try to have the highest number of sales personnel, either in outside sales, inside sales or distribution. Uh, here we can try 12. Here let us try 18. And here let us try 15. Here let us go for 12. Here 30. 
and here six. So uh, if you can just go to low end, you can see outside sale is has a medium impact. That's why we have spent the maximum. Uh, that is uh, 12. And then inside sales has uh, like uh, low impact, and that's why we have 18. While distribution has high impact, that's why we have 15. When do we go to high end? Outside sales has high uh, performance. Inside sales have medium impact, while distribution has low impact. So let's go for 12, 30, and 6. And then performance, uh, we can see outside sales has medium, inside sales has high, and their distribution has low. So let's go for 12, and then uh, 30, and then 6. And then finally, outside sales has high performance, inside sales are medium, and distribution has low. So let's go for 12, 30, and 6. Time allocation is also very important. Make sure because you are just starting up, make sure each product uh, is given uh, near equal time allocate allocation. Because for now, all products are equally important, and we want to succeed in all these regions or these market segments. So let's see. Now that is it. We are done with the uh, marketing promo and sales. We can now go to production. Uh, so here, yeah, uh, because you have to sell um, uh, 1,400 and you have some inventory, you can just produce that 1,400. Here we are projected to sell 2,300. Our inventory is very small. Let us try for 2450. Just to have some leeway in case uh, and the market turn out to be better than how we are projected. You are projected to sell 650. Let's have 700 here. Yeah, projected uh, 580. We can now 580 because the inventory will cover for us. Yeah, 530. We have uh, 62 in inventory. We can have uh, 550 just in case. Okay, now when we go to you can see for shift production for able tradition uh, market segment product is. 1,800. This is a very big amount because it means uh, we can produce as much as 3,600. And currently, we are only producing 1,400. This means uh, we only need a capacity of uh, 700 units. But you cannot do that because we are expecting the market to grow. So let us just sell some 400 units. And here we can leave the way it is. And also in Adam, which is high end, uh, now we are only producing 700. We don't need 600, no, sorry, 900 capacity because before we reach the need to produce 1,800 units, that will be like um, maybe around eight, or maybe we cannot even reach that level. So let us get get rid of this. And again, now we want um, to ensure that um, we take note like what in the future will happen. For example, customer in traditional market segment are expecting the product to get cheaper each round. Low end, they are expecting the same. So if we do not change anything, we are not going to make any profit in future for traditional and low end uh, market segment product. And how can we ensure that uh, when it gets to that point, when the prices are too low to sustain our production, uh, we can still make a profit. So what we need to do is to cut the labor cost. And we can do this by maximizing our automation. So let's have here 9.0. And here let us have 7.0. Again, we are also looking for other product in the category like uh, performance size and high end. Like uh, for, uh, for product in uh, performance, because of high reliability that the customers need, we will always struggle to maximize our profit. So to ensure that uh, we make a profit in the future from round two, we also try to improve the automation. So let us have for here. Okay, now let's go to human resource.
So in human resource now we are not allowed to make any decision. We can leave it the way it is. Okay, now and let's go to finance. So yeah, let us uh, borrow maximum, and then issue maximum stock thirteen seven hundred, and also borrow short term debt. So we are doing this because um, we want to make sure that uh, on December thirty first, twenty twenty four, we will not have a negative number. Uh, because if you have a negative number, that means we will need to take emergency loan to uh, run our product within the current year, which is 2023. And that is a very dangerous situation. We don't want to incur an emergency loan because it's very expensive for the company. Again, we are borrowing and also issuing stock to ensure we balance our financial structure. We want the amount of debt or the percentage of debt that we have. Uh, to be nearly equal to the percentage of equity that we carry in our company. Okay, let us reduce this storage. So uh, we have reduced the amount of borrowing that we are taking to 5,000 from 7,000 because the money that we'll be having at the end of the year is just much, 7,013. We just want to have some money, but not too much, because uh, uh, debt also carries the interest, and sometimes interest can really eat out, uh, into our profit, and we want to have some profit. Even though in, in the first year, we are expecting to make a loss, because uh, we are making some sacrifices. So this is a game of give and uh, take. Yeah, it's not a game of take it all. So for us, usually we sacrifice uh, round one. Uh, that means we are not aiming to make a profit round one. But what we are doing, we are preparing the company for the future so that when we come for, to round two, round three, round four, round five, and round six, as well as round seven and round eight, we'll um, have set the basis for us to maximize our profit as to as much as possible. So in round one, we are comfortable with making a loss. So as we move from one round to the next one, we are sure that from round two to round eight, we'll make a very huge profit. And that's how these games work. All right, and that's all for decision in cap, cap sim round one. So in case you have any question, kindly consider contacting us and we'll get back to you. Just uh, to recap, here in finance, uh, we have issued long-term debt and we have also issued stock and we have also borrowed. What we are looking at uh, while doing this is the cash position at December 31, 2024. And we want to have here a positive number, a significant one, so that um, in case of anything, uh, especially when you do not sell enough inventory, uh, you will not end up needing an emergency loan. Also, another thing we are looking at is how our financial structure is balanced. That means uh, comparing the debt and equity to make sure that uh, they are in balance. Uh, let's just check the balance scorecard and see how our likely points. Uh, as you can see, we are expecting to get a 43.4 out of 82. And this is not a bad thing because now we are just building the company. And uh, as you have seen, when you go to production, we have uh, tried to max up our automation rating for product in low end and um, product uh, in traditional market segment because we want to cut down the labor cost as much, much as much as possible. While doing that, uh, we are aiming to maximize our profit. So this is something that you need to do early in the game so that you can plan your company for the future. Uh, when it comes to marketing, especially the promo and sales section, uh, you can see that you are spending money in all uh, factors. You can see some, like for example, when you click here under media, you can see in high end is very poor. 
and also in performance is very poor but you are spending still a very large sum of money on it this is because if, if we spend a little or no money in this section where we will find a poor result the over, overall sold sales will go down that is the reason why we are trying to maximize in every department for now this will really help us to maximize our awareness and um, if you have high awareness that is one area where you obtain the competitive advantage uh, for sales budget the situation is also the same there are section where each spending is uh, considered low and there are a section that are considered high we are spending uh, huge or we are considering number of sales person even in those area that uh, we are not getting the maximum result the reason for this is just the same like that uh, we are having under the promotion section because now we are just starting out and we are trying to find um, any marketing strategy that will work for us so when you're starting out you are trying to do anything that will work and then when you move ahead we'll try to stop doing those that uh, doesn't bring maximum benefit and focus on those that uh, maximize your benefit but for now we are just doing anything to try and see the impact okay that's all in case you still have any question kindly consider commenting below you can also contact us via the whatsapp link you have provided you can also contact us via the email we are provided in the video description um, kindly also subscribe to our channel so that next time we have a similar video uh, youtube will let you know this is all will also be great to those people who are looking to for forward to this kind of video because it will be pushed up and also to our for to them so that they can view it that's all again have a nice time